I did not watch SmackDown. Filthy did because he's a uh, uh, you know good at his job, I guess, and uh, passionate. I, I didn't think he'd watch it to be honest with you, but uh, he he did. I watched Rampage though. We got that in common. I am professional wrestling journalist Thomas Lawler. I, did I watch... heard you say that several times, by the way, on the Christmas show, which you should be. <laughs> Uh, meddled for because for all of the heat that you take about throwing up over Brian's couch, I don't know. I think you actually single-handedly saved that show and kept it moving along there in its in its darkest uh, moments, which was most of the show. <laughs> I asked repeatedly, Brian, why am I on this show? And he said, I need you to hold it together. <laughs> so I tried to do my journalistic best uh, to do so. Uh, but, Mike, I watched SmackDown over the weekend, and the thing that they pushed the most heavily was the idea that Paul Heyman's career is going to be over. That He, he said that what's he going to do now? He's going to find a new talent and start over again? He said that's not what's going to happen. He has to face the facts that his career is most likely over. They even played a video package with clips from WCW, and the Dangerous Alliance. They had clips from ECW. It was basically a Paul Heyman career retrospective as they pushed this idea. So my Did they guess have is sad music. It was somewhat triumphant. Okay. In a way. My guess is that he will help Roman Reigns retain. You know, they, they usually don't push this hard in one direction uh, without some sort of swerve coming at you. Uh, there was also a title match between Charlotte Flair and Tony Storm, in which Charlotte Flair won uh, with a pinfall. She reversed a small package and got the three-count win. I also have a measure of advice for anybody who faces Charlotte Flair in the future. When she goes up top and she decides she's going to do the moonsault, roll towards the turnbuckle because then she cannot do... A double moonsault. If she does, well, there's going to be no one there. So there you go. That is the key to defeating Charlotte Flair, which Tony Storm did not do on SmackDown. And in the main event, we had a miracle on 34th Street fight between Drew Day, which I thought was cute, uh, as they def uh, they took on and defeated the, the the team of the Usos and Madcap Moss. <laughs> main event Madcap. <laughs> Madcap, one of the future pillars of the WWE, uh, here eating the pinfall loss to Drew McIntyre, getting he and Happy Corbin getting eggnogged repeatedly by Drew Day, leading to the finish. Not a bad show. Easy to watch. Easy to digest on that Christmas edition. Unlike the Feast of Seven Fishes I had that earlier that day. Wow, look at you going full Catholic. It just, and not even an Italian to be seen in that whole equation there. And you still went with the seven fishes. I'm impressed. I mean, my wife is Catholic. Well, yeah. But, you know, Polish, you know. I didn't know they did that in Poland. I thought they had, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, whatever they have in Poland. You know, no, Mike. Poland? Mike, what they Mike if you, <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of fish. <laughs> A lot of like uh, pickled herring and you know uh, white fish in sauce. And speaking Sausages. of fish, Mike, what do you use most of the time on the end of the pole to catch a fish? That would be a that would be a worm, I believe. That's the traditional way to do it. Correct. I was thinking more along the lines of a hook. Ah, look at you. Well, you put the worm on the hook, and you know what that worm's <laughs> going to do? Sell it, unlike Hook, who ain't selling a damn thing. And that created a bunch of controversy at This Is Rampage. Apparently that's the name of the show. That's what they say in the, the music. I didn't really notice that before. But This Is Rampage was on AEW or was on Saturday night on TNT. It wasn't on Friday night because they got to redo the show uh, Christmas story nine trillion billion times over and over again. But this was night two of the holiday bash, and all anybody is talking about coming out of this thing really is the fact that Hook faced Bear Bronson. And from what I saw, I don't know, Bear Bronson's got big thighs, and apparently that's what it was big thighs against muscular traps. Hook didn't sell the Rikishi driver gimmick that he did. He hits a Northern Lights, 
uh, T-Bone Tazplex smacks him around with his dad's forearms and, well, not his real dad's forearms. I mean, you know, just the same time. He didn't drag <laughs> he, his he's dad not, down. He's and not like, doink. Yeah. No, he's not, not doing, yeah, fake pulling arm. off Cass and whatever and, and doing all that there. But he gets the victory after putting him in the Red Rum Taz mission, and that's that. And all the controversy over, should Hook not have sold, or should he have sold for Bear Bronson? Well, that was one of Taz's gimmicks, much like Hawk, impervious to the pile driver. You know, so what you think about that? Because Taz obviously has tweeted about saying like he was going to kill the business. He showed a clip actually of uh, Bret Hart and uh, Tiger Mask where uh, Hart hits Tiger Mask and Mask pops immediately back up, kicks him in the head. And it's like, you know, you don't want to see everybody doing it. And I can take the case for why somebody why he should not have sold for Bear Bronze or why he should have. But it's like if it happens once in a while, it becomes a part of this guy's gimmick and character i don't know if it's the end of the world here i mean is it is this uh, that big of a deal here no one is going to look at bear bronson and think any less of him because he hit that pile driver and hook popped up you know what i mean bear and bronson's that's what not I was a actually... pushed guy it's not as if he's a, a you know a top level contender he's a part of a tag team which is mostly on dark or elevation uh and they do win matches but they're not featured you know and it's obvious that hook is getting a bigger push that he is has the people more behind him than bear bronson does at this point so i don't really see the big hullabaloo i don't see a big issue with it um yeah, there was a other bit of controversy, a, a lot of other controversy coming out of the show, Mike, as Cody Rhodes hey, yes. also retained, or I guess regained, the TNT Championship over Sammy Guevara. He ends the TNT era of Dynamite as the champion, much like he carried Dynamite as the champion throughout the past few years, and a lot of people both online and in the crowd, seem to be unhappy with the turn of events as Cody hit, I believe it was it was at least three crossroads, three in a row, and then followed it up with a Tiger Driver 98 to get the pinfall. And uh, the Spanish God's title reign has been ended. Yeah, Sammy looked fantastic as always. Uh, tried for a 630 and Cody got his knees up on it and Used two crossroads, actually, and went for a third, but then set up what looked to be a pedigree, and the fans, as soon as he started setting up for it, if they weren't booing before, they were certainly cascading down uh, them upon Cody there. But he didn't do a pedigree. It was a Tiger Driver 98, of all things, and he gets the victory. David Crockett comes into the ring afterwards to present Cody with the TNT Championship. Yes, how dare I talk about Hook coming out of this thing is the biggest deal where there are many people very upset over Cody Rose having the TNT championship. But, uh, well, you know, I'm not really surprised by this. I mean, also, too, I don't know what what you're more you're supposed to do with Sammy as the TNT champion. Yes, he could have a lot of great matches, but unless you're going to have him in a feud, I don't know. To me, it's still there's advantages to, to Cody with that title and bringing in different people to work against him. But. You know, if they didn't have a plan for Sammy here, kind of what's the big deal? You know, some of those belts are going to have to change hands, you know, occasionally. You know, it's, they only have a world title. So the other belts, and they want to protect that one. And I'm fine with, you know, protecting belts to a point. But it's not like title changes that take place, you know, even if it's a month later are that big of a deal. It's a TV championship. So I don't know how long Cody's going to have this thing. But I don't think it's really the end of the world or anything either. It's just a good prop for Cody to have as people lose their minds over him. Yeah, and I mean, if you watch the show, what's kind of been a bigger story? It's been this deal with Cody, you know, with the fans essentially hating him uh, against all odds. You know, it hasn't been the story of Sammy Guevara. And if you're going to try to capitalize on something that the fans are, you know, making uh, an important part of the show then now's the time to do it. You know what I mean? What do they do? Have Sammy beat Cody here and then 
where does Cody go from there? He gets, you know, does he get a little bit of sympathy? I don't know. I think he's better off uh, in this role as a, you know, quasi heel champion uh, who's going to get booed against probably anyone face or heel uh, seemingly at this point. And, you know, I I think it's just a better role. I I think the the belt is, you know, better used in this situation than feuds that they had lined up for Sammy. Maybe I'm missing something or forgetting something, but, um, you know, I think it was a good, good change. Well, and good change. Cody. Like, uh, <laughs> good. I can't good even change. say I can't even say her name from Robin Hood Men in Tights, but uh, it got changed to Latrine. Good change. That's <laughs> oh god! I gotta watch that movie again. Um, the, uh, Cody is also going to be facing off against Dan Lambert and Ethan Page in Scorpio Sky, and I wish. I wish AEW cared about their tag team division more because I love the idea of Scorpio and Paige as a team much more than separately in the environment there right now. And they have so many great tag teams. I would love to see more action, but that's probably not going to happen. But from what you've seen, you know, Scorpio Sky's got that thing. He's beaten Chris Jericho twice. Ethan Page is probably, he keeps winning matches, maybe due for something here. Can you see Cody being a transitional guy here, as well as just your opinion as a fan? Who do you think comes out of this getting booed? How do you think those matches are going to go? Do you think Cody, yes, he's the de facto babyface in those matches, but do you think they actually end that way? No, I I actually think the men of the year would get cheered. Uh, Ethan Page is very, he's hateable, but he's very charismatic. You know what I mean? He's very he's very charming. He's got a punchable face, a but he's really good at it. Yeah, so um you know, I would I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if they use Cody as sort of a transitional champion, but I think he'll keep the belt um after one of these guys gets their shot and uh then we'll see some more babyface challengers coming the way. CM Punk versus Garcia. Fast moving, neck breaker, leg subhold. On, I got a P. P gets like <laughs> <laughs> this was ten eight twenty one clothesline. Pil- Pillman punches back and forth. How'd Pillman get in this match? <laughs> I don't know. How What's happening? It? If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.